What's up everyone, it's Than from Tidal Gardens. I've got some uncommon corals to talk about today, so let's jump right into it. This video is all about Zephastria and Astriopora. A few years ago, if you asked me about these corals, I probably would not have a whole lot to contribute to the discussion. They were some of the most rare corals imported and seldom seen in stores. Much of their popularity now is a direct result of propagation over all these years, which is really commendable for this hobby. On our website, TidalGardens.com, we try our best to separate corals into their respective categories to make it easier to shop for stuff, and occasionally we run into close calls like Cephastria and Astriopora, and it's really difficult to tell them apart. Obviously, their appearance is similar. They have small, star-shaped polyps that grow out from a textured conostrum. Astriopora appear to grow polyps on top of little raised mounds, while Cephastria have polyps tight against the skin. The two corals grow in much the same fashion in that they encrust on the substrate around them. They also do well in the same sort of tank conditions, such as low light and moderate flow. In fact, I would venture to say that these corals do best in the lowest light system imaginable. Both the Astriopora's and Cephastria change color dramatically, but the Cyphastria in particular look like completely different corals from season to season. When they get too much light, they turn an unflattering brown color and stop growing. The specimens we sell in summer look nothing like the ones we sell in the winter. In case you order one in the summer, be ready to put it in a dark spot and later be blown away when it regains its peak coloration. Just for fun, I decided to look into how they were classified and what I found came as a bit of a surprise. It turns out that their family trees are not at all close, not even a little bit. Astriopora are from the family Acroporidae. If that sounds remarkably similar to Acropora, your mind is not playing tricks on you. Acropora are also from the family, as are other SPS such as Montipora and Anacropora. Cyphastria, on the other hand, are from the family Favidae. If that happens to sound like a popular brain coral, well, it kind of does for a reason. Favidae is the large family that contains most of what is referred to in the hobby as brain corals, such as Favia, Favites, Oilophilia, and even certain chalice corals like Echinopora. So we have these two corals that look really similar and behave similar, but are categorized in really different areas of the animal kingdom. It goes to show just how significant unseen details are in the classification of these corals, such as skeletal structure under the skin. DNA testing is also playing a significant role in classification. Based on just eyeballing them, I for one would not have guessed that one is closely related to Acropora and the other is closely related to Favia. Okay guys, thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed the video. A couple weeks ago, the Tidal Gardens channel reached 10,000 subscribers, which is a huge milestone for us. It wasn't too long ago that we had less than 1,000 subs, so I appreciate the interest and support. If you haven't already, you can click to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on any future video updates. If you happen to have missed our last video on Acropora, you can click the annotation here. That video is less about the care of acros so much as eye candy showing some really cool details of the polyps. Take care guys, and happy reefing.